number of COVID-19 cases continues to rise globally and right here in Guyana. Therefore, we encourage everyone to practice social distancing, wear a mask if you have to leave your homes, and wash your hands thoroughly and frequently as we strive to stop the spread of the virus. Welcome to InfoHub for Tuesday, June 23. Thanks for joining us. The watershed decision handed down in the Court of Appeal on Monday is final and will not stand in the Caribbean Court of Justice. Hear why in our first report. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Senior Counsel Basil Williams said any attempt to approach the CCJ to overturn the decision of Ghana's appellate court in the Eslin David versus the Ghana Elections Commission matter will not be heard. He said there is no appeal in respect of matters determined under Article 1774 of the Constitution. The opposition PPP on Tuesday indicated that it has filed an appeal with the CCJ after a two-to-one majority decision Monday by Justices Brassington Reynolds and Dawn Gregory ruled that the Court of Appeal did have jurisdiction to hear that Eslin David versus Jika matter and interpreted that valid votes cast also means more valid votes cast. Citing Article 177.4, the AG noted, quote, the Court of Appeal shall have exclusive jurisdiction to hear and determine any question as to the validity of an election of a president insofar as that question depends upon the qualification of any person for election or the interpretation of this constitution, and any decision of that court under this paragraph shall be final." Unquote. While the CCJ accepts its position as a superior court of record, it has continuously recognized that it only possesses such jurisdiction and powers as are conferred on it by the agreement or by this constitution or any law of the contracting party. In this regard, it does not usurp the jurisdiction reserved by the laws of the contracting party for the Court of Appeal of the contracting party. The Article 1774 says quite clearly any decision made there on uh, was final so that they couldn't appeal it. And equally under our Court of, uh, Caribbean Court of, Court of Appeal Act, Caribbean Court of Justice Act, Chapter 307, there's a provision also which says that the Caribbean Court will not exercise jurisdiction or hear any matter coming from our Court of Appeal, which was stated to be final also. So since this is final under 1774, the, court, the CCJ wouldn't hear it. The Act says nothing shall confer jurisdiction on the Court to hear matters in relation to any decision of the Court of Appeal, which at the time of entry into force was declared to be final by any law. The Caribbean Court of Justice Act came into force in 2004. At that time, Article 1774 of the Constitution was already part of the laws of Ghana. It made the decisions of the court appeal final in respect of matters determined thereunder and expressly ousted the jurisdiction of any higher appellate court. For InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Meantime, well-known Washington, D.C. attorney Bart Fisher has made it clear that the United States of America has no legal basis to impose sanctions on Guyana if the chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission declares a winner of the March 2 general and regional elections based on valid votes. Kellon Rover tells us more. Uh, it seemed to me rather obvious that you would just want to have uh, a recount based on valid votes. You know, I, I'm a big baseball fan, so... It, their argument on the other side was, well, we'll count foul balls just as well as hits inside the line. So that would make no sense in baseball. And so the, their argument uh, on the recount made no sense either, as far as I'm concerned. It was an oxymoron. Why would you want to have a, a recount and base it on invalid votes? So to me, it was sort of a BGO, a blinding glimpse of the obvious. They did it. Uh, it's a very uh, down-the-middle fair ruling. That was well-known Washington, D.C. attorney Bart Fisher during his interview on Straight Up Radio Saturday last. He noted that GCOM's job is to produce a credible result based on valid votes. According to Fisher, the U.S. government has to abide by the local legal electoral process and work cooperatively with the legitimately elected government of Guyana. There uh, had been some loose talk 
by the State Department about sanctions, possible sanctions, uh, and that was preposterous at the time. But now, in light of this court decision, it's even more ludicrous to talk about sanctions. Uh, uh, you know, if you, uh, I don't see how you could sanction somebody for having uh, an election based on valid votes. So, uh, I believe the the people of Guyana uh, should just breathe easy, breathe easily now. I mean, you know, just do their. Uh, let the commission do its thing. The Washington, D.C. attorney said there should be no interference in the ongoing process and explained that there is always an opportunity to petition after the exercise, but the process must run its course. For InfoHub, I am Kellon Rover. The National COVID-19 Task Force on Monday evening convened an emergency multi-stakeholder meeting where the implementation of measures to address the alarming increase in confirmed COVID-19 cases in parts of Regions 1 and 7 was discussed. Learn more in this report. The meeting was called after there was a spike in cases recorded in the Maruka Subdistrict Region 1. In a press release, the NCTF stated that decisions were taken to implement enhanced containment measures within the affected areas in these regions, which will be gazetted shortly. It will include enhanced containment measures such as cease work orders for specific areas in the mining sector, screening, wider testing, checkpoints and other measures in several locations within Regions 1 and 7. The NCTF indicated that specific details will be provided subsequently. The task force stated that these measures are necessary and urgent by medical experts so as to prevent the wider spread of COVID-19 in these two regions along with other regions. In addition to the government representatives present, the meeting was also attended by representatives of the Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, and UNICEF. More news after this short break. Stay with us. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating effect on communities all across Guyana. Many households and individuals now find themselves in need of public assistance. The government of Guyana will be assisting the most vulnerable. Those eligible to apply for this assistance are as follows. Individuals and or households who are currently benefiting from public assistance provided by the Ministry of Social Protection. Individuals and or households who applied for public assistance and are awaiting a response from the Ministry of Social Protection. Individuals and or households who suffered a loss of income due to COVID-19. And households headed by senior citizens or persons with disabilities. Application forms can be downloaded from the Ministry of Social Protection's website at www.mosp.gov.gy or government.gy forward slash eform forward slash 241. For further information, please call these numbers. We are in this together. This is a message from the government of Guyana. We are here to serve you. Welcome back. As of June 22, there has been a significant increase in new coronavirus cases, with a large number of these new cases coming from Region 1. Details in this report. As of the 22nd of June 2020, of the 39 tests done, there have been 21 new cases. The total number of confirmed cases is now 205, and the number of COVID deaths remain at 12. We're happy to announce that 103 persons have recovered to date. In institutional isolation, we now have 90 cases and 24 cases in institutional quarantine. There is no patient in the COVID ICU. That was Chief Medical Officer Dr. Shamdio Posad. Of the 21 new cases, 18 are from Region 1, particularly the Maruka sub-region. This shows that the region comes second in the country with the most COVID-19 cases to date. Meanwhile, the situation in bordering countries Brazil and Suriname is worsening and the ministry is urging residents in communities sharing borders with these countries to remain on high alert. Residents in regions number 1, 7, 8 and 9 you're extremely vulnerable because of this situation and need to be vigilant. Stop all cross-border movement and migrant persons entering your community. Region 9 have reported another positive case, which is testimony to our call for you to be on your guard. 
residents of region number six, we are also advising you to be cognizant of the situation in Suriname, whose cases have more than doubled in the last month. The Ministry further pleads with the general public to act responsibly. Also, more persons throughout the country will be given the opportunity to be tested with the mobile unit visiting several areas, including the Merriman's Mall in Georgetown and Monrepo on the east coast of Demerara. For InfoHub, Delicia Haynes. In response to an article published in the Kaichou newspaper June 19 entitled, GPL buys eight bucket trucks for $587 million. The Guiana Power and Light Incorporated is clarifying that these vehicles represent state-of-the-art technology and will have multiple functionalities. A release from the company says the initiative forms part of its overall plans to modernize the tools and equipment being used by the staff. Further, GPL notes that the lifts being supplied with the trucks are based on specifications developed by its technical staff, following extensive consultations and research, and are intended to provide optimal performance under Guyanese conditions. It says an open tenure process was used. Following completion of the evaluation process, GPL's tender board approved the award to Massey Motors during the month of December 2019. More on this story can be read on our website. Despite the COVID-19 crisis, students interested in technical and vocational education and training can conduct their studies online. This is according to Deputy Chief Education Officer Patrick Chinadu, who noted that learning packages are also available for those who do not have access to the internet. Neola Damon brings us the details. As the sector try to see how we can consolidate this uh, platform of teaching, because we recognize that, that this is going to be a new reality for us. So we've been meeting and discussing various formats, how we're going to enhance what we're doing, enhance what the individual teachers are doing. So we recognize that we're going to be using a blended mode of learning moving forward. Deputy Chief Education Officer Patrick Chinadu said, moving forward, Chinadu said that potential students are now allowed to complete their registration online. He said that this approach is one the sector will continue to use to ensure the safety of both staff and students amid the pandemic. The DCEO added that the ministry also hopes to launch a website with most of the learning packages accessible before year end. We've um, um, requested for some intervention to see how most of our institutions would have full access to internet, at least at the institutes, to enhance what they currently have. We've um, made a request for procurement of some laptops or if possible tablets for teachers to use. We've uh, made requests to have our principals continue the administrative activities using online uh, meetings or conference platforms. And um, we're hoping as well that we can get things like um, projectors and video recorders to assist us in the event that we have to, when school resume, we have to uh, implement social distancing in the classroom. So we are taking in that line where we may have in our normal classrooms or labs, not more than 10 students, while the rest will join the classes virtually. Neola Damon, InfoHub. Remember to do your part to ensure you do not put yourself at risk during this time. If you have a cough, fever, and a difficulty breathing, seek medical care early, but call the hotline first. That's all for today. Connect with us on all our social media platforms, including WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, as we bring you the latest and important news related to COVID-19 and much more. Also, subscribe to our website, dpi.gov.gy. Your Bridge Report is up next. Goodbye for now.